Decisión dividida. Ah, qué vergüenza. If you follow the local boxing scene, you know by now that the consensus seems to be heavily leaning toward the idea that Ryan Rosicki lost his fight to Argentina's Jamil Peralta on Saturday. Watching a live stream shot from the seats shared by an audience member, I wasn't sure that Rosicki was winning any round, let alone the fight. But for fun, I decided to rewatch the fight on YouTube in a layman attempt to score it. And although I'm not an expert, my scorecard resulted in a win for Peralta even with the unfair point taken away from him in the 10th. But let's see how I came up with that score and what Rosicki could do to win the rematch based on my armchair analysis. Hi, I'm Joe Ward of Boxer Shorts Media and I think Rosicki should have lost the fight on Saturday. In my previous video, I predicted him to knock out Peralta in round five. Now to be clear, I'm not 100% sure that I fully underestimated Peralta, but I think Rosicki might have. Or maybe he just got caught up in the expectations of the hometown crowd and fought the entire fight with the wrong fight plan, other than his last minute attempts to bulldog his way to a necessary late stage knockout. I thought it was the only way for him to win too once it got to that point in the fight, and he fought against his own exhaustion to go for it just as expected. But first off, I'll tell you how I scored it. Again, I'm just a fight fan and I'm not an expert by any means, but I tried to interpret the fight the way boxing rounds are supposed to be scored, from the limited angles that we get to see just from watching a video at home. I scored the fight for Peralta 95 to 94, but only because the ref took away a point from Peralta in the 10th and final round. I thought that was unfair as it came only in round 10, in a round that Rosicki was the aggressor, and in a fight where Rosicki got away with lots of rabbit punching without penalty whatsoever. As we know, holding and leaning is a part of boxing, and Peralta is a high IQ boxer not a brawler. Had the ref not taken that point away, I'd have scored it 96 to 94 for Peralta. I won't try to justify the individual rounds I decided to give to Rizicki, but I'll describe the general thought process behind scoring any round in his favor. I gave him rounds four, five, six, and 10. Basically, Rosicki remained aggressive throughout the entire fight, even as he was losing the rounds. Aggression is his style, but I found myself giving Rosicki credit for this aggression only when Peralta's punch output seemed to drop, and on the limited occasions when Rosicki was catching him with decent shots. But Peralta was letting his hands go, and he was clearly winning. When he wasn't, I think he allowed Rosicki to pick up rounds from the judges. When ringside judge Wayne Gray scored at 97 to 93 for Rizicki, the only thing I can imagine is that he gave Rizicki way too much credit for just constantly moving forward, trying to chase down Peralta, with aggressive, even if ineffective, attempts to get Peralta out of there. There's a decent argument that the fight was 97 to 93 or better for Peralta. Boxing is scored based on four criteria, effective aggression, ring generalship, defense, and hard and clean punches. Let's start with defense. Peralta clearly has to get the nod in every round of the fight for that factor. There's no sense spending much time here. I'm not going to penalize him for clinching or sneaking the glove behind Rosicki's back to stay close before the ref separated them. He didn't want to fight in a phone booth with Rosicki for obvious reasons. Next, let's talk effective aggression. The key word here is effective. It's abundantly clear that Rosicki was aggressive, but he wasn't effective. When Rosicki is effective, his opposition find themselves on the canvas. 100% of previous cruiserweights he fought ended up there. In his most recent fight though, he was winging shots that he didn't set up, and he exhausted himself too early, taking away some of that power and speed he was going to need to win down the stretch. Peralta, on the other hand, was very effective. When he picked his spots, he was landing, including a few spots with big highlight reel combinations. Walking through them like the T-800 from the Terminator looked badass for Rizicki, but it doesn't win rounds. This is an area where the judges' scorecards, however, could have gone wrong in a few rounds. As for hard and clean punches, Peralta was clearly landing, just not the rib breakers that Rosicki fans have been spoiled by. Remember, you can score with a jab. A jab can be hard and clean punch. The sport of boxing is not all about power punches, even if that's what gets the crowd excited. 
Riziki didn't seem to land enough of them to get much credit in this area. As I said, when he punches hard and clean, his opponents get knocked out. He even had the much bigger Rivas in trouble at Bridger weight when he was landing. However, I think he might also lose some credit for when he did land because his efficiency was so low. We seen him lunge and miss so many times in the fight that the times he was landing don't seem to be as consequential, especially with excellent counter punching from Peralta who liked to answer back. Lastly, let's talk about ring generalship. I think this is an area where the judges might have had a harder time accurately scoring this aspect or figuring out how much it should have played into the overall scoring for each round. This is the key area for me in giving Rosicki rounds when I felt that Peralta's punch output had dropped. But I don't think ring generalship is simply measured by constantly walking forward if you can't catch up with the guy you're trying to lock up against the ropes while he's nailing you back and picking his shots at will. Peralta moved like a matador, Rosicki was the bull, and I think the ring general was the matador in this fight, not the bull. If I had interpreted these factors differently, I might have ended up with that 97 to 93 scorecard for Rizicki, suggesting that just moving forward and being aggressive while winging shots, whether they landed or not, was enough to score the round in Rizicki's favor. But Peralta wasn't just moving, he was landing at will, neutralizing the aggression of a fighter with a 100% KO ratio throughout the cruiserweight division wins. But here's the great news for Ruzicki. He fought the wrong strategy and still managed to convince some judges that he won. He convinced me that he probably fought a fight that was within reach, even with a poor showing. The Rivas fight doesn't really count as it wasn't in Rosicki's weight class. So he remains undefeated, on paper, within the cruiserweight division. And that certainly has value from a business standpoint. It might also generate some more interest from the top cruiserweights who might have felt he was too dangerous to give the shot up until Saturday's match. Top cruiserweights have no reason to duck him right now. If Rosicki did enough to make the outcome of that fight with Peralta even debatable whatsoever, given the bad fight strategy he invoked, then he can win the rematch. So here's my armchair analysis on how he wins the next one. Number one, he has to be prepared to go the distance and win a decision, not try to force his will and secure the knockout no matter what the crowd in Sydney wants. Number two, he has to use his jab. He didn't use it enough, didn't set up his punches, and then he projected the heavy shots he was loading up on, making it easy for Peralta to see them coming. Bang him to the body once he gets there. A rib bruiser is just as valuable as a rib breaker. Just land on him and slow him down. Number three, he has to get his guard up the way he was able to lock it in place in times in the Rivas fight. Peralta is fast and can hit him. Let the judges see some of those shots hitting the leather on his gloves, not the leather on his forehead. Number four, he needs to steal rounds. Instead of going heavy early in these rounds, do what many of the pros do and bring the heat in the final minute or the final 30 seconds. Let the last impression the judges have, top of mind, be Rosicki landing a couple of nice solid shots even if they're on the gloves. His opponent will be more tired then than at the start of the round and more susceptible to getting caught. Number five, take a round off if he needs it. If he's exhausted, he's not gonna land power punches on a guy like Peralta unless he gets lucky. And getting lucky enough to land a big punch isn't a good fight strategy. There were rounds where Rosicki came out exhausted and went for it anyway. If there were 12 rounds, we might have seen him eventually fall over like Deontay Wilder in his third fight with Tyson Fury. At some point, the body doesn't have enough left in it to get up, even if the heart still wants to go to war. Try to plan to get that second wind, especially in a fight where he'll need to be prepared to win rounds all the way to the decision. Number six, no rabbit punching and no complaining. Don't take any risk of losing a point or just looking bad to the judges who will now be biased towards tipping the fight in the other direction to Peralta. The best way to complain about holding is to let the ref break it up, back up, reset, work the jab to get in, and land something significant to score. Frustration and anger burns off energy too. Number seven, take a slower approach in following Peralta. If he's not hitting him and pivoting every time Riziki tries to corner him, he can't win the rounds. He wants to pop a few shots and move and avoid a few off balance shots and then counter punch. It's how he won the fight for those who believe he should have won it. So don't close the distance as fast. Let Peralta back up, but look like he's avoiding mixing it up and then steal the round in the final minute with the conserved energy. Okay, that's it for now. I don't know if any of those ideas have any merit for Riziki's rematch strategy, but as a fight fan, it's a fun thought experiment to try to come up with a better fight plan. Kudos to Jamil Peralta for a great fight and for being bold enough to come back to Sydney again for the rematch, this time with less potential bias from the local judges. Riziki dodged a bullet by not losing this opportunity to shoot up the WBC ranks. 
He gets a mulligan. We just have to remember that this is the second time for Peralta too, and as a smart fighter, he'll come in with new knowledge and adjustments, but it should make for a very exciting fight. Okay, now it's your turn. In the comments below, tell me how you'd have scored the fight and who you have winning, and let me know what Rosicki has to do to win the rematch later this year. Remember to subscribe to Boxer Shorts Media via your choice of YouTube or Facebook to get notices on my future videos. Please hang up and try again. Thank you.